Welcome back to the next video in the series. In this video, we'll be taking a look at View 3 hooks. This will be a short, fairly short video as View 3 and View 2 hooks are very similar. We'll start by mapping each of the old functions to their corresponding composition API functions, and then we'll take a look at any changes that View 3 has made along with the addition of two new lifecycle hooks. By the end of this video, I hope you gain an understanding on how to call the lifecycle hooks to write better code in View 3. Let's start off by taking a look at the view lifecycle diagram. Many of the functions can easily be mapped over by simply placing on in front of the event name. The only exception for this is before create and create. The setup function is called between these two functions and therefore is not necessary. Instead, any code that you would place in these functions should be placed inside the setup function itself. Also, an additional change that has been made in view 3 is that before destroy can also be written as before unmounted and destroyed can be written as unmounted. This was simply added for a more consistent naming convention. Moving forward, there are three functions from view2 that are not covered in this diagram. The first hook is called activated, which is toggle when a keep alive component is toggled on. Likewise, there is deactivated, which is called when the component is toggled off. And for the last of the view2 events, there is on error captured, which is called when one of the descending components throws an error. In view three, there are two new lifecycle hooks. The first one is on render tracked, which is called when a reactive dependency is first being used during render. This may be useful when you want to see what is being tracked. The second is on render trigger, which is a function called when a new render is triggered. This may be useful for debugging performance when you want to see what is causing a re-render. With the release of these two new functions, I'm interested to see what the community will develop to make view debugging easier. Anyways, that's the end of this video. I hope you learned the view 3 lifecycle hooks and how to use them in your code. If you'd like to see more examples, I recommend you check out the view docs or take a look at other videos in the series where we build some applications.